uh, yesterday, but they are coming out right now, and Team Liquid have a great 1-0 advantage after taking that first game handedly. I love the draft for Mama's Boys, but it felt a little bit incoherent. The scare out to mid coming out from Weha did not really work into his favor, and so they'll have to find something else to even up this series with and try to get to that third game. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Of course, we are here on Moonduck TV. My name is Martin, and I'm not alone. As always, I'm with my German god friend, Mr. Pitt Muckle, our observer and producer, as well as Purge. How are you feeling, Purge, and how do you feel about the second game as we jump into this draft? Should be very good. Uh, Team Liquid versus Mama's Boys, the the heroes that are in the pool. There's a lot of good int heroes this game, and considering that very few of them are banned, I think that's what we're going to be able to focus on in terms of picks. Yeah, there is a very, very decent amount of heroes in this pool. Very good amount of heroes, too. The Life Stealer has been picked up a lot recently. Universe has done it, obviously, for EG. We saw it yesterday, I believe. Um, there's a lot of good carry heroes, very good carry heroes for agility heroes, and then you have a lot of good int heroes. Um, some good supports, actually a lot of them. A few of them, rather. You have, like, Winter Wyvern, uh, Rubik, Shadow Demon, Witch Doctor, Lena. See a Death Prophet this game, for sure. But or OD, either mm -hmm. would be decent. Yeah. Um, AM can counter either of those guys decently well. Um, maybe he's not amazing versus OD, but he can deal against some of it. I guess it's not amazing. You can mana drain, or you can uh, continuously gain mana, and you do pure damage, but... <laughs> Oh, we'll see how the the draft goes. There's a Morphling in the pool as well. I think that hero is likely Jug, probably. It's probably yeah. either going to be Jug or Morphling. Lots of carries. And Gyro, actually. Tons yeah. of good carries. Yeah. Even go Lycan if they want to. I would see two of three, two two of those three heroes picked up for for both squads. I I think Morphling and Gyrocopter are very good. I think Jug is very good. Um, I talked about Morphling yesterday. I'm a big fan of him, and he is very strong right now in this current meta game. So we'll see. And like it was banned out as you talked about, so that's not going to be available. And Team Liquid, they will go with the Rubik first pick, which is Kuroki. That's his hero. That's his jam, of course. And he is one of the best Rubik players out there, and for good reason. So. It kind of covers them against all potential options as well. Like there, there's still there's so many good team fight ultimate heroes in the game that I think just picking up the best support right at the start is really good. And obviously, Witch Doctor is more popular and arguably better than Witch Rubik is right now. But Rubik is uh, more of a jack of all trades. He's good against a lot more different situations than than. Yeah, if we if we had a a stats man here, we could look at the pick rate for Rubik this patch compared to Witch Doctor, and I think Rubik would be shut out pretty much completely. He, he's been picked a couple of times, but Witch Doctor has been picked almost every series that I've seen of Dota 2, whether it's Captain's Draft or Captain's Mode, assuming he is in the draft for Captain's Draft, but he will be grabbed this time around for Mama's Boys, as well as the Axe, which is an interesting pick up. This hero uh, notoriously has yeah. been nerfed pretty heavily yeah. since the last couple of patches, but uh, they'll grab that, and then on the other side, as you mentioned, the Death Prophet will be grabbed here for Team Liquid, and they'll pick up the Central War Runner, which was played by Fots and yesterday. I doubt that will be the case this time, though, Purge. Probably not. It didn't go very well. Um, no. Central offlane should be the way that they play this, most likely. Um, Death Prophet mid's completely standard. I have a feeling Fod is going to get incredibly farmed per usual here. Um, and right now, Mama's Boys, uh, the Axe initial pick just seemed a little off for me. Like, it's it's a hero I think that I've seen Nico play before, and it's got some setup for them, and maybe that's what they're interested in. But to lead with an axe when all you see is a Rubik so far seems a bit iffy. But I guess axe if you are off lane and your versus a Rubik, and the Rubik's the one trying to zone you, you're in a better spot since axe is naturally um, semi tanky, and Rubik is a bit weak damage before level three as a support so x sort of works there maybe that's the one thing they're trying to exploit but now it's kind of a weaker pick i feel now that yeah. he's up against death prophet death prophet can heal can silence him to prevent the chop from coming i just feel like x is going to be a liability to first it's tough i'm wondering why they did pick it first the first point but uh outworld's virus picked it for mama's boys the classic mid match between death prophet and od and then the jakir comes out for mama's voice as well what do you think about the od versus death prophet matchup um, it's semi-balanced. It, it actually works kind of all right for either party. Uh, it just kind of comes down to ganks a little bit. So I, I think both will work. That's fair. I personally like to see Outworld Devourer. It's pretty fun to team. I actually like both these heroes. I like watching both these heroes. I used to actually dislike Death Prophet heavily, but 
Um, with the change to Spirit Siphon, she's actually become more interesting to watch and to play as well. But she's still very strong because of that. So we'll see how she's got to be a little scary about, or a little bit worried about stuns into Witch Doctor Ulti, since Death Prophet usually has a really large amount of time where she buys, she doesn't purchase an armor item. So heavy amounts of physical and pure damage are definitely one of her weaknesses. And because they have Axe Call, if they get a fast blink dagger on Axe, it can easily translate to kills with Axe into Witch Doctor Ulti or Axe into OD. Yeah. So she's got to be a little bit careful in this game. There's some good ganking potential if they do get that uh, Blink Dagger up for the Axe. Meanwhile, Liquid will go for the Wyvern as their secondary support and then pick up the Drow Ranger in a very good uh, setup here. They already have the Death Prophet, which will help her get some extra right click potential. It's going to be their safe lane player or safe lane pick for Team Liquid, which I think is fine. Um, they have good damage. They can get a Rubik Lift into the Drow, Frost Arrow, plus the Witcher Wyvern with the Arctic Burn. There's a lot of damage potential coming out from this tri lane, but they are rather squishy. And then it is going to be Mama's Boys picking up the Life Stealer, more than likely as a safe lane hero for Podcast on their side. Yeah, Life Stealer is pretty good this game due to the fact that there's a lot of tanky heroes on liquid it's kind of bad due to winter wyvern though if somebody's really in trouble winter wyvern i feel can keep them alive so um and, and the the center kind of synergizes nice with drow as well since death prophet can chase with the stampede and, and if drow ranger does get into a bad spot you can generally run him away there's a couple stuns on mama's boys so they have good disables there um i think the life stealer is going to be a bit weak but it looks like they're just going to jungle and do that abusive ancient stuff oh so. yeah you're right in which case, I, I think it's going to work pretty nicely. Um, Mama's Boy's draft, I, I like quite a bit, but Liquid's also has a lot of synergy, and having the Winter Wyvern in there, I think is going to be a pretty decent counter. Yeah, I, I am a big fan of the Wyvern pick. And Mama's Boys, I spoke too soon. Pycat will be the one playing the X this time around instead of, uh, you know, Pycat playing the Life Stealer. So that's kind of interesting. He'll be up in the safe lane. He'll get a pretty fast Blink Dagger if uncontested, and it probably should just be Centaur Warrunner up there uh, testing him in farm. There's going to be a quick pause. While we have this happening, I do want to ask your opinion on the draft in general. Who do you favor more currently? Um, I, I think the, the Team Liquid draft comes together a bit better, um, and the heroes that they have are a bit more viable. I don't really like Axe that much, um, but I, you know, I also see that Drow's kind of become weak in the mid game. And obviously Drow's very good this game. There's a lot of heroes that it counters. Uh, Lifestealer, if you silence him, Drow's very good against that. Um, Drow's decent against Axe as well if you're from far away. So, I, And also Liquid is just a better team, so I think Liquid is much more favored here in this matchup. But I could definitely see Mama's Boys taking this if they play well with their Lifestealer and they get a lot done with their, their Axe and their OD. Yeah, so when it comes down to the last year, getting a start, good start, Axe needs to get that early blink tanker for Pycat or, or some big item. They have to start running at Liquid here pretty early and try to put as much pressure on pos as possible onto Liquid. But it's going to be easier said than done. Quick pause here before we get back into the game. Of course, this is Captain's Draft 3.0. Make sure you guys give us a follow on Mooduck TV. But uh, hope everyone is having a great morning. I know I am. I'm doing rather well for myself. Actually, it is uh, probably the afternoon or evening for most of you. Uh, Europeans out there so big shout out to you guys hopefully you're doing really well for yourselves and uh, well you're not feeling sick like a couple of us are but I'm sure we'll there's some mucus in my body it's true uh, uh, she's in the air I believe and she... uh, she's raving in the like middle of the air somehow she's not quite hit ground yet so she's having a pretty good time go this is Pycat. Go, says Kroki. So we're back in. Pigs were coming out, but uh, we are into the game. Game number two. And Mama's boys needed to win here. Otherwise, they'll go down 0-2 in the group stages thus far. And uh, Liquid will put themselves up in that second place spot. So this is very interesting, very important game coming out for both squads, really. Well, they're going to move across the map here. Uh, Kroki's got a Brutes first, so he can definitely initiate here. Uh, their follow-up is decent. Oh, Fada just accidentally used his fairy fire. Yeah, that's not great. That's rather unfortunate. Might have to play a little bit more passive. He could maybe send out another fairy fire later on if he wants to, if he gets a bounty rune as well, especially. We'll see if that's going to be the case. Some three to four man aggression coming out from Mama's Boys. The ward will be placed down by Kuroki in lane. They will not scout it out. Maybe they will. They don't have a center on them, I don't believe, though, for Saxa or Milan. But here we go. The Arctic Burn about to fly. The Telekinesis as well. Crypt Swarm is actually not available. It's going to be the Spirit Siphon. That is an easy first blood, as they also have the Precision Aura providing them that extra bit of right click. And it just takes half a second. And a good ward coming up from Groove. You get it off that, that of course, lift and kill. 
Yeah, the only reason it worked basically is because he had boots to get there rapidly, and his opponents didn't go for the fast TP placement. If they would have gone for the TP place, they might have been able to make that there. But getting that kill is really big, actually, because they did it so early that by the time the boundary rune comes, they're down one here, the hero's still running back, so it kind of guarantees the boundary rune, and it gives them first blood. Right. It's a nice little pick off there. Plycat kind of looks like he wants to walk out here, but he will not be able to get the boundary rune. It'll be picked up by Fatsa. Now another Telkinesis, so they're going to find him again. They don't have Spirit Siphon, it's on cooldown for three seconds, and now the body blocks will come out, but still, last right click, will it go? The Fairy Fire flies through, and that will save his life. Kuroki's gonna go in deep for this. Tango has been eaten from a lot, he'll stay alive. Kuroki now has to hightail it across the map, through the jungle, through the woods to Grandma's house we go for the Rubik. He doesn't care, though, he's got boots of speed, and when you have boots of speed and you're a Rubik at this stage in the game, you can do stuff like this. Um, you can be very aggressive, you can pressure your opponents, and he's gonna do that all game, basically. So it is trial lane versus trial lane, it looks like, as Sox is down here in the bottom lane, or at least dual lane coming out. You can see Milan has to go back home, he'll regen up, but you can already see the axe going to work in the jungle. I feel like this is a good trial lane for Mama's boys, but it's very tough. Kuroki is going to come through. They've got lift up again, they've got the arctic burn as well. Pycat much might just die again here, or rather for the first time, body blocks will come through. He'll try to juke and jive his way out. The last right click will fly, and Kuroki will pick up the kill, and suddenly, Kuroki and Jerex are having an amazing game. But this yep. is what you expect from the Rubik Master himself. He's just playing Rubik the right way. Lots of right clicks. He's got more damage due to the draw aura, and it's making Axe look like the worst offlane hero ever. And T is kind of bad for this reason. If he if he's against ranged heroes, he's not gonna have a good time. He's against three ranged heroes. Like you want to play Axe against melees, but man, when they opened up with the Axe pick, they just put themselves in this potential loss here. Yeah, the, the first Axe pick coming out, maybe not the best. They're gonna try to dive behind the tower, looking for Kroki. Good self. is watching, stunned in the pocket, but the cast will come through. There's the breathe fire as well. And Kuroki's gonna get caught. They don't have the call, however. Now Matumba Man's gonna be the focus. But look, Saksa take that right quick damage. He's gonna have to salve up. But it will go only for a moment longer. Kuroki, breathe far. He should fall here. But still, Saksa will fall as well. Might be one for one trade. Kuroki trying to tangle up and reach it. He actually is gonna survive with four HP. And Pycat will fall. His bottom blades, it's a disaster coming out. They're gonna lose a lot as well. Last play click. Gets off the cold embrace as well, and another kill going the way of Liquid. Already 5-0 and all from this trial lane down bottom. What a disaster for Mamba's boys already. They're, they're just getting consistently outplayed here. That's all that's happening. They're, they're underestimating how much damage they have, how much disables they have, and Axe is really showing not to be very strong just yet. This Axe is not providing nearly enough. They're going to TP back down bottom again. They... They want more, they want to keep fighting, and I, I, I don't kind of blame them because, of course, they have to try to find something here. And while this is all happening, Fox has got 10 last hits. He's four hits ahead of a Weeha. They're going to try to go on bottom limit. Top of the cast will fly through. There's the breathe fire as well. They do have Cold Embrace at the ready. And can they get it off in time? The answer to that question is yes, and now they have to back away. The South comes through as well. And Matumba Man, he's still in trouble, oh but it looks God. like he will get behind the tower. And that <gasps> oh, is with a double damage rune as well. And they just can't hit Matumba Man. Oh. That was such a sick play by Jerex there. He used the cold embrace and while it was on, he used the salve, salve as well. Yeah, yep. If it wasn't for the salve, there's no way that Drow lived there. But they kept keep him alive and still no kills on the board for Mama's Boy. Yeah, they are. These guys are all like level one, level two tops getting completely outplayed here in this early game. They are desperately trying to find a kill for themselves. They know they need some semblance of farm right now because every other lane's not really going for a well for themselves. The cast will fly through. It'll bounce up onto Jirax and Kuroki as well. He's going to get caught, but he gets off the telekinesis left in time. Now this great cold embrace can be at the brief file he's will so come dead. through. Yeah, he's still in a lot of trouble. The cold embrace will not save him this time. And finally, Mama's boys will pick up a kill for themselves with Milan getting last hit. They'll cut the tower creep. Uh, and that'll go to work for them. And uh, and it looks like with some man might come back bottom with two Wraith fans ready to go. Tier 1 tower is being pressured pretty hard here, and this is one of the advantages that Mama's boys have, is that if the, the three heroes aren't set up, the tower very rapidly gets taken due to cutting the creeps. Look how low it is with the liquid fire as well, ready to go, and this is, this is not great so far. And I said breathe fire, it was dual breath, by the way. I get confused between the dragons, but you know, can't follow me for that. Pycat's actually very low. He's got a cell looking for an arctic burn, but he's actually out of mana, so Jericho can't chase him down. Sal will fly through. Kuroki, he's got the lift. He's going to get it off in time. Pop this up as well as the stun. Fable will fly through. The cast will come in as well. Big fight already happening. Great cold embrace flies through. They have the battle hunger. But the tub of man goes to work, and Saksa will be the first to fall. He gets off the call. But this is still going to be probably all three heroes dead for Mama's boys. Great fairy fire. Jirax about to go down. But if he's the only one that falls for this three to one trade, then boy, is it worth it for Liquid as they'll pick up the third kill on the line with the last right click. And Kuroki will find himself a double kill.
and they will lose their tier one tower but i i think they're actually kind of okay with that considering how this lane went for them in their favor I mean, they, they can't win these trades. It's not just the fact that Draw Ranger's here. It's that if Kuroki lands his Fade Bolt on three heroes, they have all minus 20 damage. Yeah. That is amazing difference. They just actually can't trade with him there. They're, they're, that's like a 30 damage swing on every right click that gets through the fight, and that's why nobody's dying here for Liquid. Level wise, everybody is level three for Mama's Boys, and everybody is level four with the exception of Kuroki for Liquid uh, in this tri lane. Um... You have the double Wraith fan and Boots coming up from a Temple Man. Kuroki is already up to just about Arcanes. The earlier you get Arcanes, the better this hero is. It allows you to be so much more involved. Obviously, an early Blink Dagger is pretty damn good as well, but Kuroki's going to roam mid. Maybe dead. Yeah. Oh, Nick will get to kill with the best. Yeah. You okay? You okay, JJ, JJ? you're going to be all right, buddy. Listen, just deep breaths, my friend. Deep breaths. Back mid. Spirit Siphon Weeha. He will get off that Astral Imprisonment, but here comes the Arctic Burn. They get the lift off as well, and that is a dead OD. And it just feels like nothing besides that kill top lane is going the way of Mama's boys. Yeah, that's basically it. Like, uh, Life Stealer versus Centaur is, is a pretty good trade, basically. And that's why they did put them in this 1v1, but they've just gotten completely out of lane. There's so many kills going to Liquid's heroes that they can't actually do very well in the trial anymore. They do get the tower, I guess, and that's going to be some resemblance of, of advantage, but... Uh oh Fossa might go down here. They get off the cast coming through. They had the uh, dual breath up in two seconds. But oh no, the exorcism is going to come out now. It's time to back away in the lawn. He's about to go down. The last tick of the ghost will go through the stampede. They want to chase him further. They get the lift off of the Zaxa. He's Great in trouble. The ghost about to catch up as well. Crypt Swarm dead as heroes across the map. Fossa will get up the double kill. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Pycat's going to get caught. There's the Frost Arrows coming through. The slow up, the Arctic Bird going to work. And the last right click, and they get their time. He's fast. He's got the Battle Hunger, but the Gust will not connect in time. Jerax looking maybe for a Splinter Blast. He'll be able to through, and he comes out. And now he'll go down to the Splinter Blast of Jerax. Another kill going Liquid's way after just losing two mid and giving Fata a double kill. Dear Lord. They're completely focused on Drow doing typical Drow things, which is boosting up everyone's damage. He's got three points in Precision Aura. I would actually kind of like to see him get a second level of Frost Arrows because the, the extra slow would help, but... We uh, got caught, but the Astra came through as he's clarity up, and Fata will be okay. PyCat's TP'd in as well. They're trying to bait this. There's the Battle Hunger coming out. Can they chase him down? I, I really just don't think, even if they got the, the call off, I don't know if they could kill him. Do they have OD ult? They do, but obviously, Death Prop with being an intelligence healer was pretty damn good, so. It's kind of an interesting Weeha build, too. He's opted for three points in Arcane Aura, not doing more of Essence Aura. A different of a build here, and it also limits his mana pool a lot. As you get more levels of Essence Aura, your mana pool goes up. But in short periods of time, he can definitely do more damage and increase the amount of damage that he does with simple right clicks by stealing more int. So, interesting skill build that I haven't seen before, and he's been very patient with his mana. And he hasn't really found a kill to use those arcane orbs on, unfortunately. If he'd maybe gotten uh, a chance to well, hold that thought, the ancient black dragon is going to come in chasing after Kuroki, but there's no slow from this ancient black dragon sadly he's just gonna try his own croaky out of the lane and then he'll go ahead and fireball the creep wave and this will accelerate the farm of Nikwa nicely this is yep. one of those things you often see is just getting that early ancient here for the uh life stealer i'll say shift one support to the oh, top lane now. top lane stampede's gonna come through there's the casket as well slowed up saxes stomp double edge easy kill tp's coming through ice path is available it's level two he's trying to get it off in my control juking and jiving and well it's just milana's cancel that tp as if the things were happening mid or elsewhere but interesting centaur build as well you went for the max hoof stop here um i guess he didn't want to use double edge that often versus life stealer it's often very dangerous to do so but more stun duration a little bit more nuke damage from post stomp not a terrible way to go 4,000 hours advantage for Liquid, and it's going to continue to rise here if they can continue to get towers as well as kills. But Subman Man now has three Wraith fans, the good old three Wraith fan build. He's going to actually Ice Path, the dual breath will fly through, he'll try to TP away, and he will make it out just fine. And here comes the Exorcism, the Spirit Siphon, good Astral, but he's sitting at 18 HP, the cast will fly through, Ice Path, he gets off the ult before going down. The Spirit Siphon will continue to go to work for Fata. He's pretty damn speedy, it's going to be tough to chase him down. The Life Stealer is on the chase, he's got open he pops out of the Ancient. And we'll go to work. Great cold embrace from Jirax back behind the tree line. It looks like they can't get this kill. The Splitter Blast will come through. The call is up. They get the lift, but they will get the kill on Fata. Finally, they at least get one big kill going the way of Mama's voice, but it might be a little bit too late at this point.
And Winter Wyvern just synergizes so well with Death Prophet in this game, making him physical immune there. He got so much extra damage out of his ultimate. Um, he, they didn't quite get close to getting a kill, but that was a great attempt at keeping Death Prophet alive and getting as much value as they could out of the hero. Yeah, I mean, the supports are just doing a great job. There's going to be the Gust coming. There's going to be a cross arrow as well. They get the Telekinesis. He'll have to ask for himself. They get the tower while this is all happening. Stampede is flat. They've got the Splinter Blast. One more right click to do the job, but he's very fast. He'll make himself get away. Milan will come in. He pops up the Macro Fire. The Dual Breath as well. Getting right click down. The Frost Arrow is going to work. The Gust will fly through as well. Last right click will go, and he stays alive just barely, roughly with about 15 HP. And with some man, had he had that second point in Frost Arrows, he yeah. would have gotten all of those kills. Just really dislike this build on, on Draw Rangers. I totally get that you're getting maximum value across the map, but talking a difference of 6% on your agility, that's like 6 damage or something like that. It's not that much. It makes a difference, but what if you can slow somebody for an extra 15%, you know? That, like, yeah. they could have gotten 2 kills there. Easy. I think the second point for Frost Series is really where you want to be at before getting that max out on your precision or coming through Spirit Siphon. Fata will find an easy kill with the Crypt Storm as well. And they're just running over Mama's boys yet again. The Temple Man will start pushing down this tower. Jump in. There's already a blade from my control. The stop will fly through. The gust comes out. Double Edge will go through as well. We are barely surviving. to go bottle up as best as possible. Ash will come through on the other side. Pycat going to work with Nico jumping in. But Temple Man might be in trouble. But the great Cold Brace flies again. And they're all doing physical damage. They can't bring him down. He's back up to half HP. Now there's a stop coming out. Pycat is hoping the gust will fly through. He'll fall. The Spirit Siphon. Nico goes down and three dead. And Mamba's boys, even when they get a good engagement, it turns bad just because of the Winter Wyvern pick, which is absolutely owned to this game. Kuroki and Jerax having an excellent time here on this Radiant side. I'm watching this, how this works, I, this is actually a great draft from Liquid, man. The Winter Wyvern synergizes perfectly with Drow and with the Death Prophet against what they're playing against. It's it's a lot of physical damage sources, and if and Drow Ranger is so weak to heroes running at them, which is what Mamba's boys has. But the <laughs> Vortex just stops it. Well, the Winds of Reverend will go down. Stampede comes out. They get the cask off. Meanwhile, they're going to try to find with some man. No Wyvern to help him up this time. The Ice to fly, and this will be a free kill for them finally. And it's going to be the Axe getting it. He's trying to get to that Blink Dagger. And Weeha, he's like, oh, I kind of wanted that kill, but instead I'll just settle with having boots and an old tally wand in a bottle. That is not much in terms of net worth, and Radiant you can see it in net worth graph. Dear Lord. Well, Liquid pretty much has everything they need right now. They've got Blink on Centaur, they've got a drum. And a Treads, and a Null Talisman on Death Prophet, so she's quite tanky. Oh, he's gonna fight Soxa here. That's an easy kill. Well, that is uh, double damage, stop, right click, double edge. And my control will find a very easy pick off his mission. And he's already back up to a thousand gold on top of this. Do you, do you think he goes for that, that classic item, the four step for the Central Warrant, or he picks up another item maybe just to make himself a bit tankier? I What's the next force item? Is, I think Force is great, especially against a Jakiro, um, against a Witch Doctor, against all these hard disables that they have on. Well, they're not all hard disables, but even something like Open Wounds is a big threat. If he gets a fast Force Staff, he can easily help keep himself in Antlice a lot. Yeah. I think a Force Staff would be great for Liquid. Yeah, he could certainly start building it. He has enough money for the Staff Boost. Through top lane, the Temple Man has taken down the Tier 1 Tower. The Asha is almost completed. He's about 40 gold away from it. My control was looking for a double stomp mid. I think got the Pi Cat and another hero. He couldn't quite find it, though. He got Astral as Weehaw was coming through. That is an Aether Lens already picked up for Rubik, by the way, which is a huge item choice. And uh, it's going to get just that much harder for Mama's Boys. As now, Liquid will push into the Tier 2 Tower, looking to take all the outer towers as quickly as possible. And boy, they're doing a great job of it. Is he? Yeah, yeah Dry was going to level stats. It's a very common build, honestly. I, I still think that you can justify a second point of Frost Arrows, because if you're going to use it, it might as well be a little bit more efficient, and you I get agree. a 100% value increase out of the skill point. But I totally understand the, the stats the stats leveling. Very common for Drow to not justify the extra levels. They can actually kill this this uh, Ancient Golem pretty easily. Drow is one of the highest physical damage carries in the game. He's got a lot of HP, 2,000 of course, but Nick was going to stay alive in that Ancient Black Dragon. If he chases further, he's going to get caught and probably just get right clicked down, and you can see it. Is the Arctic Burn coming out? Can't quite get there. And they really want this tier three tower, but there's no creep wave right now. So this exor yeah. exorcism is not really doing much, and it's about to go away. You can get a little bit more damage coming out of it. You can see they'll hit it one or two more times, but that's about it. Now they're going to back away more than likely. The tier three tower might be in trouble. Some men will get Ice Path, but uh, he'll stay alive and he'll be just fine. It looks like they're committing to this, actually. 
Yeah. I mean, I... they could definitely get it with the next creep wave, I think. They, normally, they shouldn't be able to do this, but uh, it would be wasted due to the having uh, Death Prophet ult down. But... Yeah, they, they have Blink on Axe, so, I mean, there is that going for themselves. They could get a good enough team fight where they could blow up some of these supports. Maybe even Matama Man as well. Fireball will be on the ground to try to kill this creep wave. They'll get the tier 3 tower, jump in, there's the mid call. It's on a 2. Death Warp will fly through as well, but Tumma Man, where does Curse fly? That's, I believe, on the high cat. There's the stairs Eclipse. They'll take down the drop. Can they get more is the question. My control is low. Had they had the infest step, they would have gotten the kill. They're going to defend their racks for now. They lost their tier 3 tower. You can see the spirit siphon going to work. Foss is actually out of mana. They've already popped the drum charge. And they're going to hightail it out of dodge. The fireball will go and not quite connect onto Pycat or rather onto mind control. There's going to be the battle hook for Pycat onto Kuroki. He's still trying to walk away. He's got the telekinesis. The lift will go. They got the FS out if they need it. Another right click. Great ice pad somehow connects very much at the tip. And they'll pick up two kills with Pycat getting the calling blade. So they'll pick up the Drow Ranger as well as the Rubik. And they have to trade their tier 3 tower for it, however. Well, that was pretty good for Mama's voice. Um, I, I think that's overall worth it, getting the kill. Um, they got Drow Ranger. They, it was a good initiation. It was a great double call by PyCat. They needed that, absolutely. It had to be two heroes that they catch, not just one. Get a couple big kills. It's going to give them some slight gold advantage. They get some space on the map, and hopefully their heroes can get their, their first core items. Yeah, I mean, they have that blinked out for Pike, and he's already back up to a thousand gold on top of that. But you can look at the item chart here, and you see the difference already. There's a Yasha. Meanwhile, it's just like an Iron Talent for an equal, and that's it. He's got Tranquils. They have a point for the Axe, and they are just struggling to find anything. They've gotten a couple of braces across the board. There is 3,000 gold for the Ancient Black Dragon Lifestealer. So it looks like he will be going Radiance, but uh, there's already a Mech for Fata. Interesting build. This is... Not something you see every day, but I, I think it definitely suits their playstyle, so... Uh, I, I don't know if he can afford the mana to do that, personally. Uh, maybe if Crow gets another Arcane Boots. Uh oh, Saxa. Oh, he oh, he's yeah. on cooldown, sorry for double edge, my bad. He had already used it. Um, also steals the spell, it's Voodoo Restoration, not what he wants. If they get a second Arcane Boots, I think he can afford the mech. But Death Prophet doesn't have any mana regen items just yet. He does have an Arcane Rune, that's pretty good. He can pop Arcane and then do the mech. That's true. Thousand mana also in the, the tank as well. And they're going to take this tier one tower down. He could also go for a Yules later on to the road. We'll should give some extra mana and some extra intelligence. There's a good chance yeah. he'll be picking that up later, anyways. Here we go. TP in. They're going to try to go for a fight here. Spirit Siphon will fly. This ancient black dragon is actually about to die, and it will. Nico will jump out so that they don't get the last hit. Spell was stolen. Oh, jump and call on to two. Can they get anything done with this? Is the question. He's not going to take trouble. The Astral will fly out. The Ice Path. Macro Pyro. They pop the mech. There's going to be used to the Exorcism. Fox is low. Great Warriors Curse will try to turn this, though. The Exorcism going to work. Nikwa is low. He's got his best up and ready to go. He'll jump into a creep. Actually, into Pycat. They've lost the Witch Doctor. They're all so low. Hamelon will be the next to fall as Fox pops the Exorcism. And it just is a great Warriors Curse and Cold Embrace that keeps everybody alive. From Liquid, and now they're going to try to push into this tier 3 tower. Oh, and Kuro is trying to abuse the Granite Golem. I don't know if he has debugged or something. Do you encounter a bug? He got in the Granite Golem, but he can't move it. Surely it's bugged, right? I would hope so. I don't know why he wouldn't move. That's actually a huge problem, then. If, if it's bugged and he can't get out of the Granite Golem at all... Okay. okay. So, ooh, thank God. Apparently he can't control it. He was probably trying to control it, which makes great sense. He could get a Granite Golem and do a bit more in terms of damage, but it just he apparently couldn't. So a little bit of a bug there kind of limits their push. They might have been able to get the tower if he was there. Yeah, that's that's a little unfortunate. I was very scared for a moment. You were making me believe that he could not move or jump out at all, which is gonna mean that would have been four versus five for the rest of the game, and I would have been like, wow, that is a big turn. But yeah, would have forced a replay or something. Or a reload to load from replay must uh, you're probably right. Okay, you can't there's load no you, there's, yeah, you can't, the game right. would have been ruined. The game is pretty much over at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's true, they could have done that. There's no incentive for them to do so, but obviously good sportsmanship. That's that's the incentive. No, the game's not close enough to call like that. I, I don't think it would have happened. They're gonna try to fight on mid. -dump. Either way, it doesn't matter. Milan smoked up Saxa. The yeah, Fata has the invis. He'll break up smoke, and they're like, "Well, somebody's here, but we have no idea who it is." We're gonna back away. Just not get caught by whatever is coming from Liquid side. So instead, Liquid are gonna head over to Roshan. They have Exorcism back up in let's see how long, 30 seconds. But really, with the of man, the amount of precision or damage they have, they can try to take this. But here comes. Lon and Mama's boys. They want to maybe try to fight this. Not nearby, however, as OD, and he is a big ultimate. 
They have to get in if they want to contest this, and it looks like they're just gonna let it go. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to deal with right now. That Like, if they just run into a gust or something like that, it just gets really hard for Mama's Boys, among the other abilities that they have. Akuro still has Infest here. Um, he's got Arcanes with the Aether Lens, so they've got tons of mana now. And Mind Control is probably getting close to Crimson Guard, 800 gold for him. Um, I would love to see Draugr in SNY. I think it's a, one of the good solutions against uh, large ancient creeps because you can get that SNY proc on them. Mm -hmm. It's fair. It'll limit what Life Stealer can do. It does have Relic, by the way, so it's getting closer to Radiance. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be enough, though. I mean, Radiance is an amazing item for a number of reasons. Mischance, all that stuff. But you can see they've already lost two tier towers. And here comes the push. Yeah, they're going to infest out. Now the jump in call. It's only going to be out of my control. However, the spell will be stolen. He steals call coming through. They get the Astro off as well. And that'll be a friendly Astro coming out. My control staying. People fly looking for Saxa. Ice Path will hit on Defonsa. There's the same. This cup does no damage whatsoever. And the extra system still going to work. They've lost. We uh, at this point, my control will go and he'll pop the double edge socks and getting healed up as best as possible. Podcat will get the call. They're gonna try to bring him into the base, won't quite so get close. there. They're all so low. The exorcism almost bringing Podcat down. Now Nick was getting focused with the spirit siphon. There's the breathe fire, a double dual breath coming out. The death war doing nothing. And the gust will get the silence off in time. And they are corralled into the well. And their racks down bottom as falls on. They get off a great call, but there's the word of Chris coming in. And Piecat, we will see you later. And so go down to the split the class of the right click. Next to fall will be the Witch Doctor. Four dead! And it's almost going to be all five. A triple kill from a Tumba Band. They'll have to buy back. But at this point, it's pretty much all said and done. Like, we're going to look at it, take this game number two, and then, of yeah. course, the series. Tumba Man is just actually melee fighting against a bunch of heroes that would normally completely wreck it. But look at the stun. Yeah, they're gonna get the stun up. Rampage they're looking for it, they won't find it. Vatsa will get the kill. They do not get the Rampage, but the man says the GGWP twice. Maybe a little bit flustered, but that is it. That was an outdraft right from the get-go, an outplay coming out from Liquid in that bottom trial lane. It was an impressive display from Jirax, Mitsuma Man, as well as Kuroki, and uh, really just an amazing game from them, Purge. Yeah, they, they, they just absolutely won the lane.